Thank you. I, I wasn't prepared. I thought I was going last, so then all of a sudden you caught me on the guard there. Um, that's okay. The, uh, I was prepared to say, last but not least, if we were measuring by the pound, clearly not the least. But anyway, um, just to play off of what uh, Professor Cashman said, uh, my, my course is going to touch on similar topics, but uh, what's interesting is she's talking about use of state force to deprive someone of their life at the end of the process. And we just had an incident uh, yesterday where a young man was shot to death by law enforcement uh, just south of the Millennium Mall where they went to serve a warrant and there was application of state force on the front end of the process that deprived somebody of their life. And so the question is, was that legal? Was it proper? Should law enforcement have used deadly force? My course is, is a class about uh, the Constitution, 4th, 5th, and 14th Amendments, due process, and when application of state force is proper. We see a lot of stuff in the news today about when officers shoot people, when police officers tase people, um, when officers search people, and there's a lot of misinformation out there that drives me crazy because I practice in this area and I, my wife laughs at me because I spend a lot of time yelling at the television. And uh, she says, what's the matter with you? I said, what they said is absolutely incorrect. And she says, well, why don't you correct it? And I said, I don't know how to do that, you know? So this is my opportunity to correct the record in a sense. Um, I'm a local attorney. I've been practicing for about 25 years. Um, didn't start out in this area. I was a prosecutor and prosecuted cases. Uh, and then when I uh, got done prosecuting, I went into sort of the defense practice from the civil side. And I did a lot of medical malpractice, defense, and that kind of stuff. But about 13 years ago, I went to work for a firm that does sovereign immunity work and represents sovereign immune entities, which is essentially government and or government employees. And because I was the only guy in the office that had a history of working with law enforcement, being a prosecutor, they said, give him all the police shooting cases. So all the police shooting cases started to gravitate to my desk. And obviously, that's what I've been doing for the last 13 years is handling those. I've got about four or five of those going right now that are set for trial in federal court where officers have shot and killed people and now they're in lawsuits. And um, so I deal often with Fourth Amendment seizure, seizure of both person and property. People don't understand the Fourth Amendment applies to both your property in addition to your person. We're talking about searching or seizing your person. We're also talking about due process. What process are you entitled to under the law and under the Constitution before somebody deprives you of your liberty and or deprives you of your life? because there's that little thing in the Constitution that says the government shall not deprive you of your life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Uh, it's very misunderstood. If you watch uh, television today, you get a lot of information that's not accurate, and there's been a lot of controversy about that lately uh, with the police shootings that have gone on in the country. And so I'm just, I, my, the purpose of the course is to give you all a, a perspective of what the law says. I'll let you make your own judgments as to whether or not you agree with that or disagree with it because my thought process is I like to encourage vibrant discussion within the class and if you have a different opinion than what the, what I'm telling you the law is that's fine I don't penalize people for expressing it I want to encourage that uh, I like open discussion but the main thing is is I want to give you an understanding of what the fourth fifth and 14th amendment say in regards to the use of police force because it's so important in a free society that we have a state that doesn't trample our rights and that we honor what's in the Constitution and the principles the country was founded upon. I'm, I'm uh, in a sense, I'm pro law enforcement, but I'm law enforcement's worst nightmare in a sense because nothing drives me crazier than to have a bad police officer because a bad police officer does so much to undermine what good police officers do. And there are bad law enforcement officers out there. I tend to see them because typically their application of force if they're a bad law enforcement officer is not proper and I deal with those cases too and those don't usually go to trial we usually try to resolve those but um, and I can share that experience with you um, there's a perception that you know officers are out there are trigger happy and they like to shoot people and, and we need to talk about when use of forces is, is appropriate and what it's not I hope to impart some general knowledge I think it's a class that's applicable to everybody out there not just legal studies majors because Every one of you will come in contact with law enforcement during your lifetime if you haven't already. You'll either have a traffic stop, you'll, have, uh, you'll be the victim of a crime, hopefully not, but if you are, you're going to have to deal with law enforcement. And I get students all the time in my other classes that I teach will come to me and go, can I talk to you about a personal matter? Well, I had this happen, or a police officer did this to me, and, and they have lots of questions, but they don't have a lot of understanding of what the law says in these different areas. 
So we're going to have a survey of the different civil rights areas related to law enforcement use of force and I hope to be able to impart that knowledge to you. And that's generally what I hope to do. We're going to, I don't think we're going to have a book. I think it's going to be more a series of PowerPoint presentations because I do a lot of educating for my sovereign entities. I go to cities and counties and, and hold seminars for them on the, with their law enforcement officers to teach them things that hopefully they don't forget. And so I have a lot of this material prepared that I've already done and I hope to to basically present different sort of modules of, of subject matters and tie it in together into a course that I think will be coherent and make sense. Um, and so in that sense, we're also going to talk about cases, current cases, such as the shooting that just occurred and there are other shootings in the news. I think the Ferguson case is a very interesting example of use of force and public perception of what they thought happened versus what the investigation showed. And then even after the investigation was complete, a lot of questions as to why charges weren't filed, why, why civil rights charges weren't brought against the law enforcement officers. And I think people don't understand that it's just not merely the federal government stepping in and saying we're going to charge the law officer with a violation of the civil rights of the, of the decedent. The problem is, is that the, the standard in the law presently is very high in favor of law enforcement officers. And there's a, a huge hurdle for, for either a private litigant or the state to overcome when they want to go after a law enforcement officer for use of force. And we'll talk about that because I think that's very misunderstood by the, by the general public. So I hope it's very educational from that perspective that it gives you practical knowledge that you could use instead of reading something in a textbook that really doesn't you know, have day-to-day -day use for you. And that's generally what I hope to do. Any, any questions about the class? Well, we'll be talking about all the details of what a police officer does when they, when they um, interact with a, with a person they pull over or what what type of what type of ideas that they get before they they um, they go to a victim or something like that? That that is the most common question I get, and invariably it's in, if students get in contact with law enforcement and traffic stop. Mm -hmm. I've had my share of those, so I, I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. And I always get well they they asked me to do this and they they told me to do that and can they do that and they searched my car and they wanted to and yeah. so those are all things that we're going to cover in the context of the Fourth Amendment. We're going to go through what the Fourth Amendment, Fourth Amendment permits them to do in far, as far as search and how and when they make a traffic stop, what they're allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. Understand that if the law says they're not allowed to do something, and Ms. Cashman can tell you this, it doesn't mean law enforcement officers won't do it mm -hmm. because <laughs> there are practical applications of what happens in the real world versus what the, the law says they're supposed to do. Yeah. Because the redress often is, for example, if an officer says to you, I want to search your car, and you say no, and if they don't have probable, they don't even have probable cause to search, but they ask you for your consent, and you say no, and they go ahead and search anyway. Now, they've violated your constitutional rights right there. But if nothing happens, what is the damage you've suffered? My time being wasted and my, my rights being stricken off. Of right. What's the value of that? If you sued them civilly, what would a jury give you for that? You'd have a difficult time finding a plaintiff civil rights lawyer to take that case. Yeah. Now, if they searched your car, thought they found drugs, and it turned out to be the glaze from a donut, <laughs> and then you got in an argument with them, and they beat you up, or they tased you, you, you oh, follow yeah. me? Then you may have a case that's worthwhile. But yeah. So people come to me and go, hey, they searched my car without my consent. I go, yeah, they shouldn't have done that. <laughs> okay? But... That, that's different from having, gosh, I'm going to sue them for a million dollars. You yeah. follow me? I hope you never get tased and beat up and don't have a lawsuit. But, but you understand, we're going to talk about the reality of application of the law. And, and law enforcement officers often don't necessarily follow it. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the uh, class timing, as well as whether it be strictly an in-person class or a hybrid? I think, I think it's all in-person is my understanding, yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm old school. I'm not really tech-savvy guy. I'm, yeah, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Any other questions? Tell your friends, even if you've got friends that are not in legal studies, because I think it's a class that they can get a lot of practical application out of mm -hmm. um, and use on a day-to-day -day basis. At least I can save you from getting tased. <laughs> <laughs> are you thinking like one night a week, or are you thinking like evening? That's one night a week is my understanding. Okay. I, I think they were talking Mondays, if I'm not mistaken, but I, don't hold me to that. I don't know with certainty. Okay. And would you right. like have any projects or anything? Projects. Um, yeah. I'm not big on that, you know. As you know, you've taken me yeah, before. I've had you before so yeah. Yes, I've, I've had this very bad experience. My first time I ever taught at UCF, I gave a, a paper, and when I got the paper back, and I tell my students this, I said, you know, I'm supposed to grade you on content, and I couldn't get past the grammar was so bad that it was driving me crazy. And I said I shouldn't get angry at my students for having bad grammar because, you know, 
not their fault, but, but in a sense that I said, you know, maybe I'm not going to be able to teach them how to write with one paper. So I want to, and, and the class that I have would be great for papers, and I think her class would be fantastic class for papers, so it makes sense. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to get my head around, do I want to go that route or not, or if I want to do objective testing, and I haven't, I haven't made a final decision on that, but I'm leaning, I, I tend to lean away from papers, but yeah. it may be the route we go. Okay. I haven't decided yet. Fair enough? Yep. Yeah. I'm open to uh, suggestions, and well, it's not—I'm not democratic in that regard, but I'll take. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm good with papers because I like to write. You so like to write. That's for me. That's and I have other people who just get terrified when I say that. <laughs> we can do presentations, but then I have other people who don't want to, you know, get up in front of people and talk. So you can't make everybody happy, right? And the legal studies schedule goes live on March 6th, so you all be able. March 6th. Yeah, exactly. When each of these classes will be held that day. Thank you. Right, well, thank Appreciate you very much. It.